You're listening to The Building Code, your guide for a better way to run your business. I'm Tom Houghton. I'm Paul Worth. Ooh, I like the intonation there. That's a tease. That was good. Because it's going to be a difficult, it's good, well, it's going to be a difficult podcast. Yes. For you. For, for me, not for everybody. Well, maybe for everybody no. else. This is going to be great for everybody else, but <laughs> good, good luck, Tom. Thanks. I appreciate that. Joining us today, not only am I joined by Paul Worth on this podcast, I'm also joined by Paul McManus from McManus Kitchen and Bath. Uh, you're based in Florida, Tallahassee, correct? That's right. Well, welcome to the podcast, Paul McManus. Thanks very much. It's a real pleasure. I've, uh, I've been listening for a long time. It's nice to be on. Welcome, Paul. Long, Thanks, Paul. Long time listener, first, first <laughs> time guest. Doctor. Doctor. There you go. You That's, just call me PW from now on. There you go. Uh, established now. Yeah. PW. Uh, there you go. Exactly. There you go. Well, Paul, thank you, Paul McManus. Thank you for joining us today. We're talking about templates. Uh, we want to get to know you and your business, though, first. Uh, specifically, one thing that we that stood out to us was on your website, it mentioned that you spent four years traveling the world as a bicycle tour guide. Can you yeah. give us a little bit more background on that? That's quite... The resume sure line. yeah that was a fun part of the you know fun part of my life i was uh always been heavy into cycling and then one day i stumbled across this website uh, a company called tour d'afrique um they did this i used to i also a little prelude to this i used to be a peace corps volunteer in zambia in su- southern africa su- southern central africa four years i lived in zambia so this company runs a bicycle tour from cairo to cape town and I was like, that's intriguing. And it goes right through Zambia. It actually goes very, very close to where I was stationed in Zambia. So I was like, that would be an awesome way to go back to the continent and I revisit my country that I was stationed in. Cost like $15,000. So at the time I was like, well, that ain't happening. Yeah. Uh, but I saw the jobs tab, so I applied. And with my background, my travel to Africa that I had previously, I had EMT background. Um, I was a strong cyclist, had a strong cycling background. They hired me. So for four years I traveled the world uh, doing these intercontinental bicycle tours with that company. That's pretty impressive. It was fun, man. It was a lot of fun. Went to like, Cairo to Cape Town. I did four times. Shanghai to Istanbul was one of our tours. St. Petersburg to Venice. You know, all in all, I think I went to 35, 40 countries together you know, with them. How, how long was the ride from Cairo to Cape Town? It's about four months. Yeah, it's a long it's a long journey. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and you're camping the whole way. Yeah, it's 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 amazing. You know, I did a uh, I did a bicycle ride uh, in Ireland for four days, 350 miles over four days. But that four months, that, that's that's impressive. Yeah, it's a different animal. You know, the first month is a little novel, but then you, everyone settles in, and you're just that's your life. You wake up, it's your job. Every morning you wake up, you bike between 60 and 100 miles. And you go to bed and you get up the next day and you do it all over again. That's quite a way to see the, see the world. Yeah. I love traveling by bike because you're traveling fast enough that you cover distance or slow enough. And it's real visceral. You get to interact with people. You get to see things that you wouldn't see if you were driving or, or on a bus or train. Impressive. Well, that's quite the background. I think that's, that's a first for us for introductions from, <laughs> from our guests. So well done on that. Uh, so let's talk about your company a little bit, McManus Kitchen and Bath. So McManus Kitchen and Bath, actually, you know, as you can imagine, I shut down the company while I was traveling for four years. Uh, coincidentally, it coincided with the worst time in the world to be in construction because I started that job in 2009. It wasn't some grand master plan. It just worked out that way. Um, I got done in 2014, restarted the business in 2015 kind of like a typical remodeler, just like I'd always done it. I was just a remodeling contractor. I work with other showrooms in town. Uh, but after about a year of doing that, we decided to open our own showroom and become a design build remodeling company that specialized in kitchens and bathrooms. How'd you originally get into construction? I mean, you have a pretty diverse background, Peace Corps. Bicycle. Yeah, college, actually. It's a kind of a weird story. Not weird, but I start, went to work for a painter in college. He went out of business. He went bankrupt. Um, he felt bad. I was a foreman for him at the time. He gave me all his equipment and said, sorry, but here, t- at least take my ladders and stuff, man. I feel terrible. So I started my own painting company. After college, I continued to run that, turned into a handyman business. I attended a few trade schools, started doing remodeling work, 
blah, blah, blah. I got my contractor's license and here we are today. Again, that's quite the journey. A so, bit of an evolution. I tell people mostly it's because once, once you work for yourself, it's almost impossible to go back working for someone else. Like, so I tried a couple of times, to, oh, I'll go work for this guy. And it's just so hard once you, you know, I think get the bug of running your own company. Yeah. And you mentioned after a year, you made that tr transition to design build and man, we've had so many guests on that are design build companies. And I talked about the benefits of that. What led to that decision? What were some of the, what are some of the barriers for companies who don't do that? And how'd you sort of, you know, get through those barriers? I think that, you know, the main way I think I got through those barriers was just pure ignorance, you know, not, not knowing some of the challenges and some of the expenses and just pushing ahead and solving problems as they came up was a big one, which I think, you know, often how a lot of things happen when you're an entrepreneur. Um, but for me, why I did it, it was mostly control, you know, of the whole process. We were having issues with delays where we felt like uh, some of our vendor partners weren't ordering things on time or not prioritizing our stuff enough. And it was causing us some issues, some design problems. And so we decided to bring it on house. Um, it's been great. It's taught us a lot. We're definitely, we're better remodelers for being design build than, you know, cause now we have a much better product knowledge and much better understanding of the whole process. So. Yeah. And what are some of those costs slash barriers that one, if, if somebody's in your shoes, you know, four or five years ago, whatever, whatever it was, and they want to get to be design build, what should they be looking out for? Yeah, that's a good, good question. The, it was more expensive than I thought um, to get displays and set up a showroom and all that. And I kind of compare it. It's a little similar to, you know, how difficult it is to find and hire subs and develop relationships with subs. Doing that with vendors is a very similar process. You got to find vendors you trust and have will want to support you and you want to work with them and you like their product and you want to grow together. And for a small showroom like us, like if I go to Kohler, Kohler doesn't really care about me. I mean, they care about me, but I'm a, you know, I'm a tiny ant on the la landscape of things. You want to find vendors that, you know, want to support someone at your scale. That's challenging. And then really it opened up a whole level of management for me, like managing designers, managing salespeople, showroom staff, that's a different animal than it is managing uh, subcontractors and guys in the field. Uh, so it's just a relatively steep learning curve, but nothing is in insurmountable. Uh, I found a lot of great support through a couple of different groups uh, that, you know, were very helpful for me. That's awesome. <clears throat> Speaking of things that have probably helped, you're using technology obviously in your journey and you've chosen Builder Trend as your partner in that. Uh, what was that process like in getting started? Um, and how, you know, does that help you stay organized in your business? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't run the company without Builder Trend at this point. I probably could, shouldn't tell you guys that because now you know you got me on the hook. <laughs> the, uh, it's our little secret. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, I feel like I was very lucky in adopting Builder Trend because I adopted it. Um, so 2015, late 2015, early 2016, I brought it on board. And so I've been able to use Builder Trend as almost like a guide to how we built out all the systems for our design and build firm. So when we started looking at, well, how are we going to manage POs and selections and all that, Builder Trend was there. Um, so we were, rather than trying, I think a lot of my friends in the construction industry who adopted Builder Trend, they are trying to wrench their legacy systems on the builder trend, which can be a challenge. Sometimes you have to unlearn and relearn in order to do that. We were able to just sort of, you know, go with builder trend from the get go. And that was very helpful. I don't, I wouldn't be running the same company without builder trend. I would have done things probably differently, probably less efficiently, I would guess. So speaking of efficiency, I think you've got a new process too, or a new service that you're calling uh, bath express. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit more about that? I can tell you a little bit about that, but I got to tell you, you guys really do your homework <laughs> because that went up on the website this morning, I think, or maybe yesterday morning. <laughs> so what can I say? You're like one of 10 people in the world probably. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, now there's a whole lot more people. Who know. Much, I mean, if you click on that link, it doesn't actually even go to a live page, you know, the right page yet. That's kind of why we wanted to know. You, you intrigued us funny. with the name. We want to know more yeah, about it. It's hilarious. I was building it this morning. And of course, like you always do, I ran out of time. So I had to go to an appointment and I was like, well, no one's going to click on it today. So <laughs> 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 surprise. <laughs> 
uh, MKB Express is that uh, you've probably heard of things like two-day bath or five-day bath. MKB Express is sort of our version of that. So it's a way to provide more economical uh, bathroom and kitchen remodels to homeowners uh, in Tallahassee. That's yeah, fantastic. It's a quicker process, different product. Try to try to provide something high quality, lots of color and style options, but it's faster and less expensive. Okay. And for you, it's it's economies of scale, right? You guys are going to probably do it the same way, limited set of toilets and sinks and things like that that they choose from. So That's the right. client, client gets a really good product, but you guys can really like scale it. So you can do more and really pump them. I got to believe that, you know, the key to this, this podcast templates is, is has, has a big part of that, right? Templating yeah. your schedules and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Now we haven't built anything out for MKB Express yet, but certainly leveraging Builder Trend and that that sort of uh, that service, that product is is going to be critical. Fantastic. Let's let's transition that and talk more about templates. Um, yeah. Obviously, you've got a lot of experience using them. Tell us about the kind of before, during, and after of your process in exploring the template world of Builder Trend. What's great about templates is the first template we built was very very simple. For, I think probably, I bet for the first six months I'd use Builder Trend. I didn't even pay attention to templates. And I would build new calendars, every single job, and new to-dos every single job. And then finally, it might have been after I went to Builder Trend University where someone sort of opened my eyes to the power of templates. We built our first few templates. And now every, we, do a, you know, we do an autopsy at the end of every project. We call it a job autopsy meeting where we kind of go over what went well, what, what didn't. We're updating the template now every job you know, tweak this, tweak that, who's assigned to that. And it's, it's a great way to make sure nothing falls through the cracks, you know, ever. Right. Cause we import that template. We have one for kitchens, one for baths, a bunch, some for follow-up, some for pre-construction. Um, it's got all our to-dos and calendar items. And then once we import it, you know, obviously it has to be tweaked. Some things might get deleted, but what we're making sure of is nothing gets missed, uh, which has been, extremely helpful, especially when onboarding new people and training new people. There's no better way to make sure, you know, things run smooth as you're bringing on new staff. Yeah. One thing we talked about in the previous episode with Jordan, uh, who really introduced the audience to templates if they hadn't heard it yet, is that a lot of people think templates are for production home builders, right? If you build the same home every time and you have the same three, Mm -hmm. you know, colors and things like that. But I mean, you are a kitchen and bath company, so it speaks to, it could really be for any, any size of company and any style of, of construction they do, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We're full custom kitchen and bathroom model. So, But even though every job is different, the sequence of events is often very similar. And the to-dos, the things we want to do are very, very similar. So we're always doing demo. We're always doing, you know, tile install or doing cabinet install. So those things are all, all built in. And almost more important than the calendar for us are the to-dos. We use a ton of to-dos. Uh, to make sure follow-ups done, ordering's done, following up on orders is done, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Just making sure all the boxes get ticked. Yeah. And one tip for people they, they may not know is they think they need one template for a job. Like you could have a kitchen template for certain features and then you can just bring on, you know, smaller templates and like what you mentioned phases. So you could have a whole, you know, set of templates for a certain phase of a job. It doesn't have to be all built at once, right? Absolutely. Yeah. We actually use a we use a design template. So we sign a client, we, we first import a design template. We then have a pre-production template, which is sort of the ordering phase. Uh, then we have that, what we call the build template, which is the actual kitchen remodel. And then we have a follow-up template for our follow-up process and warranties and you know, staying in touch with the client and all that stuff. That's great. So what was your process in getting started? Like you said, you, you came to BTU probably, and that's when the idea kind of got started in your head about using templates. You'd heard obviously probably how beneficial they are to use. What was that process of actually putting digital pen to paper there? You know, it wasn't, it wasn't very difficult because I've been building, you know, you're building them already day to day. So it's just a matter of building one and importing it. And then, like I said, it's just slowly improved it over time. Yeah. I mean, I kept trying to remember back, it's been four or five years now since we first created them. I think I went a little off the rails at first because I created way too many templates. <laughs> I think I went nuts and was like, oh, I'm going to have a template for a hall bathroom. I'm going to have one for a master bathroom. I'm going to have one for a powder room. I'm going to have one for a small kitchen. And that was a little too much. Uh, and we wound up going with just a standard kitchen, standard bath. Uh, and so that worked well for us simplifying it. But it's just an evolution. They get changed. They're so easy to change and update. We just, 
we're in a meeting and we say, hey, how do we forget to do this? Well, I don't know. Well, how do we make sure we never forget to do this again? Well, why don't I add it to the kitchen template? Good idea. Let's do it. And it gets added right there. And then we'll never make that mistake again. I think one thing we missed in the previous episode for the uninitiated to the templates is where the heck do you find them? <laughs> where in Builder Trend <laughs> is this mysterious templates menu? Uh, that's a great Wait. <laughs> Tom, have people just been listening to last week's episode and just been furiating at their desk? <laughs> they were like, why didn't they just tell me where it is? We just wanted to keep you in suspense all this time, folks. So thanks for being patient with us. You can find it in underneath your jobs menu. If you hit the jobs menu, there's a drop down there. You can switch to the templates menu. Uh, it's kind of hidden. And, you know, I know from our support team, we do get some calls from people sometimes when they accidentally switch to one and they don't mean to, because obviously you're kind of still working in the program the same way you always do. It's just instead of having your jobs list there, you'll see the temp templates menu list. So that's where you can see all the templates that you already have built out for you. So look for the jobs menu above it where it says jobs menu. You just click on that drop down, change it to template menu. And now, you know. Yep. No one is half the battle. <laughs> that is very true. Good play there. So you obviously started off, you went kind of template heavy, then you came back to simplifying your process, which is great. And now you like you said, you've got a couple of different options for your templates and, but you also have to do, do tweak them. You're still say you're still saving time though. You're still seeing the benefit out of using these, right? Oh, yeah, it's a huge time saver. I mean, one, one click and my designer has imported an entire project calendar. Now my project manager is going to have to go in and there's, he'll spend 15 or 20 minutes, you know, tweaking that to any individual job, but for all intents and purposes, it's done once she imports it. Yeah. I'll leave the group with this is that, you know, this is our second episode on templates, but two episodes back, we talked to RV Gallup and he had mentioned he's going to start using surveys. And one of the best things to do, people think that surveys should be the end of the job. And one of the best things to do is template a, a handful of different surveys, right? Mm -hmm. How do we do during our sales process and actually release it while they're still just finishing the sales process? How do we do with, you know, setting up expectations and, you know, the, the demo? Um, but it's just more of a great way to check in with a client. So there's a plug for surveys. That's a, that's a two episode callback. And mm -hmm. uh, a favorite a favorite way you can template is, is surveys right there. Do a handful of them and release them throughout the job. Yeah, I'll have to listen to that. I missed that podcast episode. I'll have to listen to it. When I first started trying to template surveys, we had some issues with uh, the template importing correctly as a, in the end of the schedule. That was a, that was two years ago, probably. But then we got in the habit of doing it outside of Builder Trend, uh, and I never came back to it. So maybe I'll have to relook at that. One thing I want to talk about with you, since we've got you on the line, is obviously kind of trends in kitchen and bath that you're seeing. One thing that I saw on your Instagram page, which by the way, if you're not following McManus Kitchen and Bath, do that now. Pull out your phone. Well, if you're in a safe spot, get off the road. If you're driving, don't don't just do this in the middle of the road. Uh, be safe. Uh, so go follow them on Instagram. It's just at McManus Kitchen and Bath on Instagram. That's a pretty easy handle there uh, to follow. One of the things I saw that I wanted to talk about specifically was, because I've not seen this yet, is a little custom cubby for somebody's uh, iRobot from their Roomba. Um, oh, yeah. I, I yeah. love that idea. We've been doing a decent number of little cubbies like that and underneath tall pantries, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because I'm a big, obviously big fan of technology, big fan mm -hmm. of like robot stuff <laughs> like that. We've got a robot vacuum named Gerald. That's his name. Nice. Uh, Paul, Paul's got one as well. Nope. That was my hand. Just trying to understand what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we got robots in the house now, Tom. <laughs> I thought you kept those in the garage. Nope. Nope. Those are, they're, they're invading everywhere now. Technology's everywhere, Paul. You gotta, you gotta okay. get with it. So, okay. you know, the little, so there's lots of different players in the game. There's Nito, uh, there's Roomba. Uh, so these will clean, they'll vacuum your house. Um, let's see, I think. It's uh, Nito has one that actually will mop your floor mm -hmm. um, yeah. as well. So, uh, wow. but what's, you know, so it's great. They're great tools to have, especially if you got a family, you got small kids, you got crumbs everywhere. Or if you're just like a neat freak, like, you know, me, then, you know, Hey, great. You got that too. Uh, but they're kind of just out in the middle of nowhere. Usually they have like, you know, they're about a foot and a half, uh, by, you know, like some about, about that size and they're just kind of out in the middle of nowhere. So, 
having a spot for it to kind of like quote unquote return home, its own little home that's kind of tucked away. I think that's genius. That came, I got a robot vacuum six months ago. Game changer. Yeah. I recommend. Mine does really? the mop. Yeah, mine, yeah, it's fantastic, man. It's in a way it's bad. It makes me a little lazy. I'm wiping off the kitchen counter. I just sweep it right on the floor and I'm like, robot's going to get that first thing tomorrow morning. I yep. don't even bother. But uh, you learn a lot when you get one because I learned, oh, my couch was like a half an inch too low for the robot to go under the couch. So I got some little risers and raised my couch up. But so now we start to design kitchens. We think, well, what's going to get in the way of, you know, things like that. And then the cubby came out of that conversation too. I love it. That's so cool. Now I want a cubby in my house. So Paul, you'll have to come up to Omaha and we'll figure out a spot for we'll me bring to bring up the team next week to BTU and we'll do a dual purpose visit. There you go. I love it. Uh, so besides robot cubbies, <laughs> that's a thing now. <laughs> what, what else, what other trends, what other tips do you have for us? So as far as like cool little things like that, um, which I think are a little more fun than global, you know, more global trends like white cabinets and waterfall countertops and stuff are more popular, but we're big fans of what's called an angled power strip. So if you Google that, we get ours from a company called Task Lighting, but I'm sure other companies make them. Um, instead of a plug in your backsplash, it's an angled power strip, if you can imagine that, that goes up at the bottom of the cabinet. So you have this, you know, what we always hated is you have this beautiful backsplash. You're spending $40 or 60 or 80 or $100 a square foot on this backsplash. And then we go cut holes in it every four feet and jam an ugly plug in there. <laughs> well, this angle power strip lifts that up under the cabinet and your backsplash is very clean and pretty. And they also will put lights in them. So you can get a lighted angle power strip. So it's an under cabinet light and, and it's all the plugs for your kitchen. So we like those. We use those. They also work really well underneath countertops. So like on the end of an island, they tuck right underneath the end of the countertop for convenient plugs. So we like those a lot. Um, workstation sinks, another big one for us. I think those workstation sinks are going to take over the world. Um, there are these kind of larger sinks with little recesses in them. So accessories like cutting boards and colanders fit down into the sink and can slide around. Super efficient, um, very practical. We use a lot of those. Um, I think more and more of the trends that we like, we see in kitchen bathroom modeling that we like are things that just let you customize it to the exactly the way you want to use it. There's so many great opportunities for that these days. So. Sure. I mean, I'm, I'm ready for a kitchen upgrade now with all those, those fun things. I do love the idea of keeping the backsplash clean because it's true. Yeah. You put them every, you put them so close together. That's such a great idea. Yeah. The only time we wouldn't do it is like if you have a coffee maker or something that will live on the counter forever in the same spot, we'll put a plug right behind it. Sure. It's also fun because you invite friends over and you say, Hey, well, do me a favor, go plug that, you know, whatever it is, plug that radio in over there in the kitchen. What are you going to walk in and they have no idea. <laughs> they can't. Well, yeah. We actually had a client once we were looking at old pictures of kitchens with her. It was not a client, a potential client. And she said, she pointed at one of our kitchens and she said, Oh, I know a man designed that kitchen. And I was like, well, why would you say that? And she's like, there's not a plug anywhere. Look at it. Only a man would do that. And I was like, oh, no, you got to wait. See, the angle power strips are hidden up here. There you go. Next level. I love it. I, and then I just, I'm looking forward to when we're doing like wireless power at that point, right? Just forget all the plugs yeah. and yeah. just everything's wirelessly powered. All that induction, under the counter induction stuff, that technology is there. Yeah, yeah. It might just be a matter of time. You just put your blender on the counter and blend. Yeah, that'd be cool. Not? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Good stuff. Well, Paul McManus, that is not other Paul. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today, talking about templates and some trends and Paul, we're throwing in some highlights on surveys. So that was a fun little sneak in there. That was, a good tip. That like was good. That's there good. you go. Uh, so all good stuff. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. And again, we wish you the best of success for your business. Hey, thanks so much guys. This was fun. Thanks Paul. Appreciate you. Love what you heard. Don't forget to rate and subscribe to our podcast so you can hear from more guests that will benefit your business. Also, please check out our show notes page for more information on what we discussed on this episode. You can find it at buildertrend.com slash podcast. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on The Building Code. Appreciate you.